It was just wrong. It was just wrong. We wouldn't want that happening to our dog, so. Tonight, caught on camera, we brought you accusations that a Billings mailman maced a dog for no reason. Now, new video of it actually happening. It was exhausting. The snow conditions were were very trying and definitely put us our skills to, to the test. Plus, why search crews are calling the rescue of a snowmobiler in the Bighorns a miracle on the mountain. And it's all on the line at the state wrestling tournament in Billings. We hit the mats next on the MTN News at 10. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. So good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. For the second time in less than a week, the U.S. military shot an object out of the sky, this time over Alaska. It's still not clear what the object was, but it was described as the size of a small car. It was shot down over frozen territorial waters. North American Aerospace Defense Command detected an object on ground radar and further investigated and identified the object using fighter aircraft. The object was flying at an altitude of 40,000 feet and posed a reasonable threat to the safety of civilian flight. U.S. Northern Command is beginning recovery operations now. It was just last Saturday that a suspected Chinese spy balloon was shot down in the Atlantic days after it was spotted flying over the Billings area. That balloon was apparently flying at a high enough altitude that it was not a threat to any aircraft. Brand new video showing a Billings mail carrier spraying a dog with pepper spray. We first brought you this story Tuesday, but now for the first time, we're seeing the moments leading up to the incident. Our Kelsey Marison has a closer look at the video in a story you will see only here on MTN. That incident happened here in a south side neighborhood. This new video clearly shows the man walk across the street and spray the dog. But as you can see, there's no mailbox near where that happened. She was rubbing her face all over the carpet and everything. It was quite the shock for the Guzman family when their almost two-year-old dog Shunka ran inside in a panic Saturday afternoon, rubbing her face on whatever she could. Shunka's owner confronted the mailman outside of their house, suspecting he had done something to their dog. So I confronted him and I was like, did you spray my dog? And he's like, well, yeah, I did. I'm just really scared of dogs. She was right. This footage from a security camera right across the street captured the moment it happened. It, according to our video, it looks like he's got the spray in his hand, you know, kind of like this, and just walks over and just sprays him. Debbie Boyd lives across the street from the Guzmans and said she and her husband were shocked when they saw the video and their stored security footage. We watched the video and saw that he had come to our house and then went directly across the street. And we thought, well, that's not right. You know, we, she should be going right next door here to Brendan Mike's. And we were kind of floored about that. Boyd said the mailman usually delivers mail to their side of the street before crossing over to the other side, but went out of his way to spray Shunka on Saturday. There is no mailbox along the fence where the dog lives. The mailbox is on the side of the house. MTN reached out to the mail carrier. Our messages haven't been returned, but the Postal Service did provide us a statement, which reads in part, the Postal Service routinely asks customers for their help to keep our carriers safe during deliveries. Our carriers are equipped with plant-based repellent and are always instructed to only use the deterrent with great discretion. You can see the dog burying his head in the, in the snow a couple times, like trying to wash his eyes out and stuff. So that, that was upsetting to see because we wouldn't want that happening to our dog. A dog Boyd says is friendly and just wanted some love. We couldn't imagine that that dog was being aggressive because he's just, he's so, he's puppy, he's playful and stuff. That was just wrong. That was just wrong. In Billings, Kelsey Maris. MTN News. Property taxes have been a big concern for many Montanans, and they're largely determined at the local, not the state level. Now a bill has been proposed that seeks to address the growth in local taxes by putting limits on the growth in city and county spending. MTN senior political reporter Jonathan Ambarian takes a closer look at that proposal. On Thursday, a Montana Legislative Committee heard testimony on a bill that would establish a cap for just how much large cities and counties in Montana can increase their total spending year to year. The House Local Government Committee held a hearing on House Bill 324. Starting in 2026, it would limit affected counties and cities to raising their expenditures from all sources in accordance with inflation and population growth, except in a declared emergency or when voters approve the increase. Representative Caleb Hinkle, a Republican from Belgrade, said it was designed after a statewide provision in Colorado. He said addressing spending would be the best way to tackle increasing property taxes. 
Jesse Ramos, a former Missoula City Council member now representing the group Americans for Prosperity, said it would lead to more transparency for residents. So that if cities are doing a good job, they don't even know we passed the bill. And if cities that are doing, quote unquote, a bad job by just spending too much and taxing their citizens out of their homes and making it unaffordable for folks to live there, they just have to ask the voters that I'm not saying they can't do it. This bill doesn't say they can't do it. The sponsor isn't saying they can't do it. They're just saying just be transparent. Local government representatives spoke in opposition to the bill, saying it didn't take into account the technical impacts it would have on cities and counties and that they can't simply treat funds from all sources as the same. I would be happy to sit down with them and identify ways that in Montana, we have plot processes in place that you could come up with a theory to cap year over year, both revenues and expenditures. But you can't take a Colorado bill and slap it in Montana and make it work, and that's what this bill does. The committee took no immediate action on the bill. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Voters in Roosevelt County elected a new county attorney last November, but less than three months later, he's already being removed from office. Turns out Frank Piocos didn't actually live in the county. MTN's David J has more on how a private citizen made that discovery. Frank Piocos once worked in Yellowstone County as a public defender. He says he's worked on criminal cases for 23 years, but that career was upended last Friday when a judge determined he could no longer serve because he doesn't live in Roosevelt County. When running for public office, getting elected is usually the most difficult part. But in Roosevelt County, keeping the job turned out to be even more problematic for Roosevelt County Attorney Frank Piocos. A judge ruled last Friday that Piocos wasn't qualified to serve. I just decided right is right and it needed to be done. Darla Downs is the publisher of the Northern Plains Independent in Wolf Point and filed a complaint alleging Piocos falsely registered as an elector when he provided a Roosevelt County address that wasn't his residence. I wasn't filing on, you know, he's doing a bad job or he didn't do the things that I wanted him to do on other cases. It was strictly a residency issue. The court agreed. According to court documents, Piocos was actually living in Valley County, at least at the time he was elected. Piocos was first appointed to the position in February of 2021 when County Attorney Austin Knudsen left to become Montana's next Attorney General. Piocos was then elected in November to stay on. MTN contacted Piocos. He wouldn't speak with us on camera, but told us, I disagree with the judge's ruling, but I respect the decision and I will not appeal. He went on to say, it was my intent and declaration to make Roosevelt County my residence. We'll know either to appoint, extend this interim position, or run a special election. We've, that's our choice of law. Commissioners have now decided to hire an interim county attorney and hold a special election to let the voters decide a permanent replacement. We have to keep the speedy trial thing going. There's 13 cases that are going to come to our attorney's office. It's a mistake made right thanks to watchdog journalism and a private citizen who did the right thing. What frustrates me about the whole thing is that a private person is the one that has to bring the court case. In Billings, David J, MTN News. An iconic Montana bar and cafe that was destroyed in a fire reopened today to a lot of fanfare. If you spend any time in Butte, you're probably familiar with the historic M&M Bar and Grill. It went up in flames in May of 2021. The new building is just north of the original. They even designed some of the tables in the new building with some of the burnt up money and tokens that survived the flames. The owner credits the community for helping them rebuild. Positively Montana is sponsored by Yellowstone Valley Electric Cooperative. Valentine's Day is just around the corner, and usually it's a day to shower our loved ones with gifts and dinners, but it's also a huge day for animal shelters, and there's some creative events happening to help spread the love for our future furry family members. Valentine's Day is all about showing some love, and not just for that special someone, but also that special pet. I was talking to one of my single friends, and she was like, eh, Valentine's Day is not my favorite. And I was like, well, how could I make it your favorite? And she's like, well, let me come cuddle some cats. And I was like, I, I can do that. From one end of the Big Sky State to the other, animal shelters and rescue groups are capitalizing on the holiday. The animal shelter in Great Falls is setting up blind dates with pets. Fill out a form and they'll match you with a furry friend. 
Here at the Yellowstone Valley Animal Shelter in Billings, bingo is the theme. It's called Bingo with Bingo Valentine's Edition. So yeah, this is meant for, you know, single folks, if you have a partner or if your dog is your furry valentine, just a fun night of, of bingo. The shelter is teaming up with Bark Park for a date night with your four-legged family members with the hope it'll lead to more pet adoptions. If we have adoptable dogs here that are friendly with other dogs, we'll bring them and yeah, so hopefully at the very least just a, a fun night for dog lovers in our community to get together and have some fun, play some games. These dogs get to get out into an event where, you know, people maybe might not get a chance to make it over to the shelter to see, you know, the dogs that are needing homes. Um, so they get to see them in like a public setting um, and just kind of get some exposure and give them a chance to get seen and get adopted. Shelters all across the country are joining in on the fun. Everything from puppy grams delivered by cute faces like these in Tennessee to naming litter boxes after your exes in Indiana. And at the San Antonio Zoo, you not only can name a cockroach or rodent after that ex who just won't bug off, you can feed it to an animal. We're always trying new fun things to, like I said, raise funds for our animals and help connect animal lovers in our community. A holiday now taking on a new twist and uniting man with man's best friend. In Billings, Phil Van Pelt, MTN News. Ahead on the MTN News at 10 here on Q2, a miracle on the mountain. We'll hear from those who came to the rescue of a stranded snowmobiler in the Bighorns. And later, all the action from the state wrestling tournament in Billings. Keep it here.